Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book uh, which has come to us from Oxford University Press. This is a very important book. It's been around for a while. It's called Sato's Diplomatic Practice. It's now in its seventh edition. We'll have a look at it in a minute, but it's actually the centenary edition. So you see, it's been with us for a while. The current edition has been edited by Sir Ivor Roberts. And uh, the book itself is, I think, uh, very important at this particular time, with diplomacy being very much to the fore, um, bearing in mind that Britain has decided to leave the European Union and we are looking at the moment at Britain finding effectively its place in the new global community, um, spread over a period of time when we leave the EU and we see very different things happening uh, across the world. Now Elizabeth and I talked about this book in some detail because it's an important, it's a big book and we'll look at it in a minute. And we gave for our title uh, of our review Sato's Diplomatic uh, Practice now in a new centenary edition from the Oxford University Press. A very simple straightforward statement. Let's have a look at the book first of all. It is a heavy book, red cover, Nice picture at the front. I'm sure you all know what that picture is. And I'll be telling you, I will do in the in a few minutes, don't worry. There is the spine, and then there's some information on the back. Actually quotes from some people. Brian Leverson, David Owen, Jeremy Greenstock. So you've got some leading players commenting on this book. It's a heavy book. There is the dust uh, jacket back inside cover. It runs to um, 750 pages. There is the in, inside front cover of the dust jacket. And what you've got is right at the back, you've got uh, a quite detailed index. It's by page numbering, so you should be able to find stuff pretty quickly. And it's uh, then after that, working backwards, you've got a bibliography. So there's quite a lot of information there. Now at the front, You've got the actual, I've uh, got a picture of Sir Ernest Satow there. You can see his picture there. And then you've got the actual front cover. And this, as I said, is the centenary edition. You've then got all of the blurb about OUP. Then you've got the actual summary of contents. So you've got the index at the back and the summary of contents at the front. Um, you can see how that runs through. Uh, it's, it's separated into um, seven different books, if you like, uh, or parts. And then um, under each part or book, there is a, a series of, of, of chapters. In fact, it's eight, not seven. And then there are two appendices, and then the bibliography and the index. And then you've got a table of contents in a lot more detail. So you should be able to find anything you're looking for uh, pretty quickly. Uh, then there's uh, a very useful... Uh, prefaced to the editions. This is the seventh edition. You've got a preface, of course, to the sixth edition, but the preface to the centenary edition, which is dated July 2016, is there's only a short preface, but there's a much longer one for the earlier edition. Then you've got uh, acknowledgements. You've got a very useful list of abbreviations. And then you've got tables of cases, naturally, and lots and lots of different cases from national courts and tribunals. Then you've got international treaties, conventions, etc. All the usual suspects are there. Then there's tables of legislation, of course. And then you get to the, the actual book itself. What you've got here, which I do like, and it's now uh, a fashion for quite a lot of publishing houses, is to have a little mini index at the front of each chapter, the way you have here which makes it easier because you can find things. There's footnoting as well, of course, in this book, which is helpful. It starts off with definitions. You can see there's a lot of footnoting as well, which is to be expected uh, from what is a very, very important work. There is Sir Ernest, again, just to remind you what he looks like, and a centenary edition to boot. There we go. So I'll just put that back there. And I'll tell you a little bit about what we think of this book. It was a, an interesting book to review, I must say, because whilst it's diplomatic practice, there's a huge amount of law involved in this, because it's looking at international law, effectively, in the way we do, the way we conduct ourselves with other countries at a particularly important time, 
as Britain looks at a different role for itself. So for anyone not previously familiar with it, <clears throat> Satow's diplomatic practice is a revelation and should occupy pride of place in any lawyer's professional library, whether said lawyer is involved with diplomatic matters or not. And diplomatic practice, after all, has been and likely always will be a core consideration <coughs> in international law. Now, this edition is the new seventh edition from Oxford University Press, and it celebrates the 100th anniversary of what is a distinguished and happily readable work of scholarship and uh, anecdote, rightly regarded as a masterpiece. In its multiple editions published since Sir Ernest Satto first wrote it in 1917, it has certainly kept up with the times and the dizzying pace of social, technological and attitudinal change that has characterised the last turbulent century. That's the 20th century, of course. Under the editorship now of Sir Ivor Roberts, the previous edition of 2009, like this new edition, is reflective of its time, indicating clearly how much and to what extent diplomacy has changed. And as Sir Ivor points out, to cite only a couple of examples, the focus of diplomacy has shifted in the direction of a global audience and global concerns. England has replaced, uh, sorry, English has replaced French as the international diplomatic language and radical developments such as the internet and social media have rendered diplomacy and diplomatic initiatives much more visible. I think it's important to note that the new US president's compulsive tweeting has, at least to some degree, bypassed and more than occasionally sabotaged traditional diplomacy. I'm doing this review just after Trump has become president um, in, this is actually recorded in February 2017, and we await every day interesting developments in this area. But as Sir Ivor reflects, international organisation and institutions are unlikely to emerge unchanged, and many may, uh, and may not survive, of course, but di diplomats and diplomacy will still be required. And as President of Trinity College at the University of Oxford, and a former British ambassador to Yugoslavia, uh, Ireland and Italy, uh, Robert speaks with authority. He's supported in the production of this work by the research and commentary of 10 expert contributors from Eileen Denzer to um, Anil Clooney, uh, who will be known to many of you. Special tribute has been paid to Ms Denzer, whose diplomatic law title, also from Oxford University Press, has been acknowledged as the gold standard work of reference in this field. Now, within more than 800 pages, it's, it's a big book, this one. This book, as you would expect, covers an, astounding, an astoundingly wide uh, range of topics, including much new material uh, following a short history of diplomacy dating from its classical origins. There is an enlightened introduction to international law and new chapters on public and digital diplomacy and on human rights. Uh, I wonder where Anil Clooney comes in on this. There's a, there's a surprise for you. Um, <clears throat> also scrutinised are NGOs, intelligence agencies and commercial security organisations, the latter of which certainly piqued public interest during the recent US presidential campaigns. And the impact of increasing international terrorism and violent non-state actors is also critically examined as we enter what is really a fascinating period at the beginning of the 21st century. So let me conclude by saying this book is erudite, authoritative and a fascinating read and as such should attract a readership that extends beyond the diplomatic and legal fraternities and I, I do think it's something that would have a much wider appeal for anyone studying international studies, for instance, international affairs. Scholars and researchers, too, will appreciate the extensive footnoting and the tables of cases and of legislation. There's also a table of international treaties, conventions and other international instruments, plus a lengthy bibliography and two appendices. So you get a lot of information here, and it's really up right at the highest standards of the AUP um, titles. Um, 
Note the stunning cover as well. I mentioned that right at the beginning. That cover there. Appropriate. It's Hans Holborn's 1533 painting of the Ambassadors with its famous optical illusion. I'm not going to go into all of that now, but look at it and I'll show it in a moment. It seems that one masterpiece has inspired another. And the publication date is cited at 2017. Now I'm just going to show you the nice picture of the Ambassadors there. And you remember the optical illusion. That's all I'm saying. Let's open the book in the middle. This is about the state. You've got some paragraph numbering at the side here. You've got footnoting, um, a lot of information. Uh, the state, and it goes into applicable law. So it goes straight into a lot of information. Immunity from criminal jurisdiction of the state. The head of state. So you see you've got a huge amount of information. And I think it's certainly a Bible, if you like, for the diplomat. Um, I'm delighted it's come out again. I'd like to thank everybody uh, who's involved in this very much indeed for producing it and a happy centenary to everybody for the continuing production of it. All the very best to you. Bye-bye.